Hello YouTube, my name is Jeff and welcome back or welcome if you're a first time person here on the channel. And recently, well I this I'm again well I just cleaned a bunch of bottles together for no reason. Uh well yeah, recently there's been a couple of leaks from well Amazon.france, which was a weird one. We normally don't get leaks from Amazon.france. Uh, of regarding what was it let me just put this up of 14 if I'm not mistaken so, well if I think it was 14 wait let me count um, wait e5 3 5 7 9 9 11, 10 11 12 okay 12 of 12 uh, what did I say? I put seven. Twelve games from, th from third parties uh, coming to Nintendo Switch, plus four more first party ones. Um, this could, well, obviously they don't have a release date, don't have anything. They just have that they appeared, we know who they're from, they know what platforms they're coming from, every single one of them, and we know if they're exclusive or not. Uh, also, this is being recorded right before uh, my Xenoblade Chronicles uh, Definitive Edition Future Connected playthrough can be, uh, begins, so check out if you please. And also, this is also happening uh, the day of, of the Hot Girl videos, uh, or Hot Girl 69, uh, tease from, from Nintendo, or, from, or tease about Nintendo doing something this weekend i need i really need to stop uh, touching the bottles simply saying that she's expecting a big announcement from nintendo during the weekend and that yes it's a weird time to do it uh, if you don't know who she is or he is we don't know uh they know me just hot girl video 69 nice on switch on switch on twitter uh she confirmed or he confirmed i'm gonna say she because hot girl uh confirmed that E3 was cancelled and teased the Nintendo Direct for March 26th, although she was wrong in that Nintendo was going to reveal uh, Samus, or Samus, Zelda and Metroid for on that Nintendo Direct, uh, although, again, she had that wrong, she had that wrong, she correctly confirmed the other things. Uh, also important to note, she has gotten uh, I, I believe, I, I obviously don't want to say it will happen or that she has any legitimacy, but I believe her more than I would believe uh, people like Sabi or Zippo, who apparently fling out as much shit as they can the wall. Uh, something very funny happened with Zippo recently, if you haven't been following, I do. I lurk around the reset error thread for the Nintendo uh, Direct speculation, because some, from time to time you can get some real information coming from people like Nate Drake. And Rogers could show up, and then Rogers, in my opinion, during the Switch era, has really redeemed herself as in a leaker, as how, as an insider, I should say. Uh, and maybe even Jeff Grubb, the guy that uh, correctly uh, talked about the GDC at the Nintendo Direct for March, but the GDC, or not the GDC, the Nindies Direct in made March, which uh, that one kind of to me doesn't really mean much because, you know. Uh, it was something that everybody could have predicted. I've been predicting it for a while, and I've uh, and even I've said it that in the previous video that I predict one to happen in the week of uh, the 27th of August, I believe, or like in August. I forget when it was. When it is when uh, Gamescom is going to happen. Uh, but you know, I believe her more. I believe these people more than I believe Zippo. And I was saying because I was talking about the thread. It was funny because Zippo came in with a with a brand new render of Princess Peach from Mario Kart 8 telling people to think for themselves as in guys there we are getting a new Mario game or a new Mario Kart game that's the big holiday title because he doesn't believe that uh, the 3D All-Stars, the legend 3D All-Stars and uh, or Super Mario Bros or Super Mario 3D World Deluxe would be the big games for the holidays and think for yourselves and this is new and think critically uh, to Dan pass uh, as like obviously he was you know, when when somebody can tells that tells you that they're an insider, and we assume they're correct on something, or we ha we uh, we give them benefit of the doubt, you would think that you know you call yourself an insider. You're bringing up something that allegedly is new. People are gonna know that you're not speculating. This this is not speculating. When you bring out a picture, say it's new, tell people to think for themselves. That's you saying Mario Kart 9 is happening, and it's happening on the Switch, which I don't believe it will, and that's a topic for a different video, probably coming out very soon, hopefully, fingers crossed. Um, 
but as I was saying, it takes the, it took that, he said it was, and it was real, the new picture, new render for Princess Peach in Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, people were like, no, even, no, this is not a new picture, everything in here is from Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, maybe the render is new, but that doesn't mean much for Peach, it's still a Mario Kart 8 uh, picture, because it was uh, Peach on a bike, and the it was Isabel and Mel Villager, I believe both of them were on carts, and it was in the Animal Crossing track, and then the, he insisted it was uh, real, uh, got called out and then somebody reversed or searched the image and found it. It was a postcard from a year ago and he went off on some people. Some people mishandled the situation for sure, but I've seen things, uh, worse things being flung at uh, Emily Rogers at, at uh, my, I didn't say as bad things as about it as Emily Rogers as some people did for Zippo, but at the same time, like, he very clearly knew what he was doing. He knew he was speculating. He, 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 he was leaking and then he was speculating because he know uh, what some people are saying might be true if he truly is an insider. Uh, Reset Era says that he's in the position of being, that's what the moderators of Era say, he's in the position to know stuff. Uh, then he probably knows that um, Nintendo is uh, the EPD team is doing something, the team for Mario Kart and Arms. Uh, but you know, he's also the guy that said that they had problems knowing what that Fire Emblem was a Nintendo franchise and that he, what was it, that uh, he wasn't expecting Nintendo to do anything with, you know, he said. Uh, Nintendo is not doing anything with the, with the ARMS franchise anytime soon, and then, you know, ARMS is just the next character in Smash, the first character for Volume 2, uh, which also might be getting another video very soon regarding also the 35th anniversary of Mario. But as I was saying, uh, I prefer, I'll give uh, Hot Girl uh, the benefit of the doubt, because unlike others like Zippo, she has gotten things right. Uh, there's not just shit being flung at the wall. You could say that uh, she confirmed E3 being the, the, the cancelled, I believe, in February. You could say a lot of things were being cancelled, so maybe she just flung uh, that. But I believe she was correct on the 26th of March being the date for the Direct, which would have been, and it was an anomaly, uh, because of the time period being second half of the month. It was late March after Animal Crossing, not everybody. Not a lot of people were expecting that and when we had no games announced, but she is expecting something during the weekend and not only Jeff uh, Grubb, who we will consider an insider for a little bit too, um, said on Twitter not, that he will never lose faith and Nintendo tweeted out, uh, uh, just tweeted out uh, of um, Mario in Paper Mario the Origami King with you know the, the, the Samus helmet at the end, which we all took at, as what it is, a, a hint at Metroid. Which, if it isn't, that's a cruel thing to do in the trailer. I can understand in the game being there is like, oh, oh, cameo. But in the trailer for Paper Mario the Origami King, the reveal trailer, that's a little douchey if you're not, you know, um, revealing another Metroid game so anytime soon. And we've been hearing rumblings for Metroid 5 coming out. Possibilities there. And well, 2021 is the 35th anniversary of. Uh, the Metroid series, it's also the 35th anniversary of Zelda and the 25th anniversary of Pokemon, so I could legit see Breath of the Wild 2, Metroid Prime a Trilogy and Metroid or Metroid 5 and uh, Pokemon Diamond and Pearl all coming out in 2020, 2021, which would make the year, ooh, so tasty, so good. Cool. Could it be better than 2017? We have to wait and see on that one, but there is a possibility. Now, uh, Getting back onto the topic of the video, we, we went on a little bit, which is uh, me predicting what would be these 12 or 16, and I went to the wrong thing, these 12 or 16 games being announced or coming out for the Nintendo Switch from numerous third parties. So here are the numbers from the Amazon France listings, and also this, this is the French Amazon listings, means that this is only this is retail listings for Europe, which will be very important in a little bit. So let me go over with this. And actually very important in some games specifically in a little bit too. So we have three games coming from Bethesda, two from Square Enix, two games from Mother Brothers, two games from Ubisoft, one game from Take-Two, one game from Capcom, and one game from Konami, plus the four from Nintendo. Now, let's go for the four from Nintendo first. Um, I don't, this retail listings come out now could indicate that these were all for E3. Normally we get these big dumps a 
couple weeks before E3, and he gives us doesn't give us a, uh, an estimate how many games could be at, in a, at, at the direct at E3, or how many games will be announced, because a lot of the times, a lot more games get announced. I believe last year we had like 15 of these, and then we had more than obviously more than 15 games announced at the Nintendo Direct. Now, as I was saying, this is very important. Uh, oh yeah, let's go for, for the four Nintendo games. So. I don't think any of the supposed Mario games are going to be a part of the four from Nintendo. For the simple reason that we heard from the past, in the past, not in the past, wait, what am I going? Oh yeah, that allegedly, if the Mario event, believing that the Mario event would happen, we've heard from a number of insiders, but then again, so we did from Star Fox Grand Prix, that the Mario games were all going to be revealed and announced prior to it. It was going to be a big media event in June with the theme park, which we have a picture which was looks lovely. Uh, we would also be getting um, information on the movie. All that would happen in June alongside this with a big one for the 35th anniversary. But allegedly Paper Mario, uh, 3D World Deluxe and 3D All-Stars. Let's go with 3D All-Stars. We're all going to be revealed and would be, coming, uh, would be all revealed and announced either in April or May. I believe the dates were uh, Mini Direct in um, late March. The Mario Direct in the month of April and then May another mini direct and then a big blowout at E3 coming out uh, recently soon, uh, soon. So this is uh, retail listings from Nintendo 4. So I'm gonna go with four. I'm gonna do two takes on this. Four not including the Mario games and then uh, two including the Mario games because that would be two separate S uh, uh, SK, uh, SKU. So let's go first with the four non Nintendo or four Nintendo games without Mario. So Without Mario, I would logistically say 2021, we know some, or 2020, we know some games. So I would expect maybe uh, if it is listings that would be popping up around E3, uh, I would say Pikmin 3 Deluxe. We've heard a lot of, about it. Apparently, it is scheduled on track to this year. Uh, if it is correct, great. It's here. Fantastic game. Deserves all the sales in the world. Deserves to be ported. It's a fantastic game. And if it comes out, you should pick it up uh, because it's a fun game. Uh, then a second one will be Metroid, uh, Metroid 5, be it uh, released this year or next year, the listing would go up in 2020 because that's normally what they do with these types of games. The listings go up before, like a year or so before, like um, we have the listing I believe for Breath of the Wild already, Breath of the Wild 2 already up on Amazon. I remember Breath of the Wild, the original one, going live I believe in 2014 or 2015. Uh, and that was years off before the game came out uh, and I believe it was 2014 and that was a year off before the release of the game so listings practically go up the moment a game hits or sometimes it's delayed until a later date depending on what the developers want to do so that's two out of the way which were relatively easy and the ones I would also like to do if the two the, the Mario games are included in this so yeah that, would, that, that was the easy part now predicting others uh, if we're gonna add two more uh, I would personally kind of add uh, a Splatoon, not, uh, yeah, a Splatoon spin-off because we've been. It, it's too soon for Splatoon three. I know what I, some people are gonna say. No, it isn't. We need Splatoon three. Splatoon two has been. It's been longer period of time between one and two than it is from two and now. Um, those obviously have very different circumstances. Uh, the, the 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 space and time difference between. Uh, Smash 64 and Smash Melee was longer than Smash Melee and Brawl and the difference, the gap between Brawl and uh, Smash 4 was bigger than the difference between Smash 4 and Smash Ultimate. So it doesn't really matter if the gap was is bigger or smaller because it depends on the system. If the Switch wasn't successful, maybe Splatoon 3 would come out sooner rather than later. Um, or Splatoon 3, I should say. But I don't think Nintendo is gonna go and change a lot of things. That's why I don't think Mario Kart uh, 9 is coming or 10, whatever they want to call it, comes to the Switch. I don't think it's needed and it would be beneficiary to do later and it would benefit Nintendo to do another thing. Same thing with Splatoon, expand the universe uh, while keeping the franchise popular. Maybe an RPG, maybe a rhythm game could be fun. Uh, there's a lot of things they could do with, 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 the, with the, um, Splatoon and now we just have to wait and see, see what they do. I personally am a fan of either like I just said, the, the, the 
the rhythm or the RPG. I think the RPG could be really, really fun, especially depending on how they go about it. If it's like Splatoon, but in the medieval area, I know a lot of people will be like, oh, dude, that's not fun, but like, I would like kind of to see it. But at the same time, uh, a strategy RPG like XCOM or Mario and Rabbids Kingdom Battle with the Splatoon characters will be fun, but I would like to see them incorporate more uh, melee-based combat, which would be interesting to see. And also the reason I believe me uh, medieval one would be fun for an RPG would be because, you know, it's it's Splatoon is already based on a post-apocalyptic post-apocalyptic world. It would be fun to see the characters in a different scenario. And how they would inc implement the ink and the paint mechanics onto an, a medieval setting or a fantasy setting. Maybe it could be sci-fi. Maybe they can go and make an RPG in space. Maybe my uh, idea from years ago, which now I've seen a lot of people say. Uh, uh, with, which and I, somebody said uh, asked me if I was high back in 2014 about the Star Fox uh, cross Mass Effect. Basically, if I like, take the Star Fox universe and put it in a game style like Mass Effect, but you know, dial it back from the M rated to a, a more uh, a PG teen rating or a plus or E for everyone or E10 plus uh, would be fun. And I know I've seen a lot of people say that and and. Uh, it fills me with joy because I, I, I said that in 2014 and now more people are saying it and I'm like, yes, more people are thinking the same way as I did. Uh, uh, and it, it feels a little bit vin uh, vindicate, uh, uplifting, not vindicating. I don't, I don't know what the word is. I know what the word is, but I cannot pronounce it correctly. Uh, okay, so that, that leaves three. Um, also, other ideas for a Splatoon spin-off, maybe a kart racer, much more unlikely, a platformer. Unlikely to, but I, I think a rhythm game I think it would be really cool. Uh, but yeah, uh, that leaves us with a fourth game, which is the one that I'm having a little bit trouble coming up with. It could be the announcement of Wave Race, but I don't see it. We've heard a uh, we heard about like oh you're gonna hear, hear about it, uh, but I don't, I'm not too confident on that one. I know the director talked about it, uh, but it could be an end amount of things. It could be a crap ton of things. Heck, it could even be Metroid Prime Trilogy being announced on the same day as Prime 5 or Metroid 5 and boom, those are the two SKUs. But I do believe Prime Trilogy is already up for listings in a lot of websites. I'm not too sure of, 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 uh, of France. So let's remove that one and think of something else. Um, it could be, uh, I don't know, like a super um, Mario Party 2, it could be another Mario sports game, um, could even be like, a, a, I know I was going to say Pokemon a Sword and Shield DLC, but I don't believe that would be the case, it could be Pokemon 2, it could be Detective Pikachu, uh, there's a lot of things that it could be, uh, so I'm going to say, I don't know, I don't, I legit, this is the first time I'm like, I know, hey, I'm going to throw a lame out there and say it's a new IP. Nintendo every year since the, the Switch launch has launched a brand new IP and they've gone and done some wonderful partnerships with some indie companies who also release uh, some indie level Nintendo property, uh, Nintendo uh, games uh, like Good Job and Stretchers and Snipper Clips. So I'm going to say a brand new IP. What is it going to be? I don't know. We had, um, what was it? We had a motion control based game in 1 2 Switch. We had the do it yourself. Uh, Labo, and we have the fitness RPG known as Ring Fit. So, and the amount of things could be we don't know how crazy Nintendo gets. So let's get on to the third parties, shall we? And uh, you're gonna notice a little cut because I have to go do something. I actually drink because my mouth is dry as hell. And we're back, back again to talk about it. Let's go third parties. Okay, so. It is three games. Let's start with the Bethesda ones. Obviously, I did it the in order before, but I will say it again, just in case. Uh, three games from Bethesda, two games from Square, two from Warner Brothers, two from Ubisoft, one from Take-Two, one from Capcom, and one from Konami. Now, again, this is retail games for Europe. These are games that are going to be released as a retail physical form in Europe. And I'm going to leave the company that I think this matters the most to last. Uh, so let's go in order by mo more games to least games. So let's start with Bethesda. Bethesda has, uh, Bethesda has three games coming out for the Nintendo Switch. 
One of them is a Switch exclusive, while two of them are multi-platform. So the Switch exclusive one probably will be followed for um, um, a Game of the Year collection. Or no, or Doom. I don't know if Doom is in there, but assuming Doom is not in there, let's go with Fallout 4 uh, Game of the Year Edition or add, or add or add of Doom Eternal. The other two are multi-platform, so I wouldn't be surprised if it was a Fallout collection for one of them with, you know, 3 and New Vegas, or both of them, Fallout 3 and Fallout New Vegas, both of them being re-released or being ported over in HD, in HD or Ultra HD, I don't know. Uh, for all all these systems, um, I'm trying to think what else Bethesda could bring. Dishonored could be it, could be it. Prey could be the exclusive one, but I doubt that. Um, you know, so there's there's that. This Dishonored is there. I completely forgot about Dishonored for a little bit. Um, unless they're remaking and bringing Oblivion onto the next generation or not next generation, current generation systems. Um, I'm not expecting that, so yeah, I would go with Doom Eternal, or Doom Eternal, or Fallout 4 Game of the Year Edition for the one exclusive, and for the other ones, a collection probably either um, the Dishonored collection. But I think Dishonored is already on PS4 and Xbox One, and even the collection is there. Could be wrong on that. Um, so I would choose those. Uh, then Square Enix has two games coming for the Switch. Both are Switch only. Now the interesting thing is that this is from Square. This is coming in listed by Square. This is important because Square games typically are ported over or brought over to the West by Nintendo. Nintendo normally is the one doing it. They did it for Octopath Traveler, they did it for Dragon Quest XI, Dragon Quest Builders 2, and basically all the Dragon Quests. So for it to be Square tells me that this might not be something that Square um, or that Nintendo can publish maybe. I have a feeling that either 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 one of them is or both of them are related to Kingdom Hearts and it could be the Kingdom Hearts 3 Complete Edition and the Kingdom Hearts uh, the story so far or 2.0 or whatever with everything both of them coming up by Square uh, that's the only thing I can think of I, it could be the last the, the world ends with you too but I think that would be um, even if it's timed exclusive it would be um, localized by Nintendo just like the world ends with you part one or the world ends with you final mix was uh by nintendo so um i'm expecting that uh to be the case maybe i don't know it's wizard uh but yeah i'm expecting probably <laughs> probably that uh, then we have two games from other brothers one will be exclusive to the switch and the other one the other one won't so what i could see is um injustice 3 be the multi-platform oh excuse me jesus like I feel the burps coming up. I hope it didn't pick up. Um, well, the first one I don't think I even burped it out loud, but still. I could see Injustice 3 come out. It could be that. Um, they already have Mortal Kombat 11, so I doubt it. Uh, it feels weird. It could be a special edition that they're doing. I don't think any of these have prices. They just have 2020 as a release date. It, it feels weird. The multi-platform one, the, 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 the one single one, the exclusive could just be a Batman collection, you know, the Arkham games being brought over, uh, it's possible. Uh, it could also be the Injustice 2 being brought over to the Switch, a little way to the party, but still. Um, the multi-platform, again, is one that's kind of weird, because I don't know a lot of uh, Warner Brothers games, I'm going to be completely honest. Uh, it could also be um, Shadow of Mordor being brought over. Uh, I think that's the first, the, the demo of the first game. I know the second one was in two, not as good as the first one from I remember, and was riddled with microtransactions. As far as I can remember, it's been a couple of years. So, I don't know. Um, but yeah, but obviously I have, don't have much to say about uh, Warner Brothers, so let's swiftly move on to Ubisoft, who has two games, both of them multi-platform. So, um, they're published by Ubi, they're multi-platform. I'm not expecting and Mario and Rabbit's Kingdom Battle 2. That could be a part of one of the Nintendo ones, should Nintendo be the one deciding now, like, we are now um, publishing two. Uh, the first one was published by Ubisoft. Uh, obviously, if it is, if these two couldn't be Mario and Rabbit's by the simple fact that it's a Mario game and, and they're multi plat so uh, what could it be? I don't think Ghosts and Monsters has a retail SKU, but if it does, let's remove that. That's a, that's an in case, let's uh, put it as maybe Watch Dogs. 
uh, problem is that I think also, that one already also has a, a SKU for other platforms, so it's tricky. So I'm trying to go with un unannounced games, but because these are multi-platforms, it becomes a little bit weird in a sense. So it's it's I don't know 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 the multi-platform is what kind of kills it because if it was a free uh, a, a game it could be like oh any amount of things um, I was all gonna was gonna say uh, maybe Assassin's Creed but I believe um, Valhalla I think or Ragnarok is already on Amazon so I'm gonna remove that as well but that could be it so if it is games already announced and they don't have SKUs and I probably don't know about it or I don't know they had it uh, they're already up for retail and if they're not it would be probably most likely uh, ask, uh, would be Ghosts and Monsters and uh, Assassin's Creed that would be a shocker that would be a plot twist maybe we could also see Skulls and Bones we haven't heard about that one in a while um, so they could be doing it it could also be Just Dance that it could be as easy as that it's just Just Dance uh, it could be also a new IP, Ubisoft likes to do those, it could be Trials, it could be a new Rainbow Six or Rainbow uh, or a Tom Clancy game, maybe it, it is Splinter, it's, it is Tom, Tom Clancy Splinter Cell, is it Splinter Cell? I think it is Splinter Cell, could be that, uh, I don't think Beyond Good and Evil would be, I think that they, I don't think we're ever going to see that game again, uh, and I don't think it would come to Switch. I find it very unlikely. I don't. Want, I don't even remember when was the last time we heard about it. Was it like 2018? It's been a couple of years now. Uh, possibility is there, yeah. But again, with this being multi-platforms, it kind of ruins it because a lot of third parties bring is ports and mostly old ports and being multi-platform. It could be a Rayman collection or a Rayman game. Yeah, no, I don't about it. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> I was saying old games, uh, Rayman came to mind for whatever reason. So yeah, it, there's a lot of things. Ubisoft is very, very. Um, a company that could, uh, if they if they wanted to, I think they could logistically make a console, uh, and they have they have enough of their own for of their own um, games to possibly build an audience if they could do it. I think they are the one of the few companies. Should they decide to make hardware, uh, they could, and it would just make it a fourth console on the market but i think i think the mark I, I i hate the fact that like, people feeling that the market is not big enough to have all the companies uh you know like we have car manufacturers left right and center i think consoles not you don't need consoles left right and center but like, consoles uh, phones and all, all that shit are made by multiple companies i think companies like, ubisoft could come may, uh, probably won't and it, there's no guarantee it would sell that sell that well, but I think they could logistically make a, a, a video game console. But that's beside the point. Um, then we have a Take Two multiplat game. This again throws a wrench into things. Take Two is a big company. They look and oversee a lot of stuff. And if had this not been multiplat, I would be like GTA. We've been hearing a lot of conversation about miracles coming to the Switch. If there's a miracle, Red Dead Redemption 2. With the, with the Take Two game multiplat, there's not. There's a lot of things that could be. Uh, the fact that it's multiplat kind of eliminates GTA. Um, kind of eliminates. Uh, oh, actually, it could also be the case of. Uh, according to this listing, I, I just realized that it all, they all say the only ones for Bethesda, the only one Bethesda is the only one that has one of the games listed, or two games listed as multi-plats, Switch, PS4, Xbox One. So I went, I w I've been going with the assumption that these games would be uh, multi-plat between all three, but then again, they could be multi-plat between all three, but also include Series X and PS5. Or if they just include PS5 and Series X, so those games are still back in the market. Uh, but it's it's a weird one. Take two. Um, they have a lot of stuff. It could just be NBA. It could legit just be NBA. But then again, when it's NBA, we think take uh, 2K, not take two. You know, it's the same thing with with GTA. It's like we think of Rockstar, not take two, but take two is the owners. I don't think I don't think they are the owners of the Lego game. So I know that's. Uh, Jesus, why? Why am I yawning now? I shouldn't be yawning. Uh, that's that's Warner Brothers. That's another one that could be a Lego game. It's a weird one. Can't, take two is a, 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 a like Ubisoft. It's like there's too many, too many. Um, and no, being multi-platform is what throws again a, a huge GTA 5 sized wrench into the uh, 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 to the speculation. 
because obviously without it we can list off a shit in the games probably I could just I could just go to Wikipedia and like take two intellectual properties and I have a list of games that I could pick from um, you know what fuck it Ellen War 2 the electric not would it be electric blue Ellen War 2 Casablanca edition that's it that's what it is uh, it's throwing throwing shit if I get that right I'm an insider I learned that from the internet yeah let's go with that but only if this video gets views so please share it around and if I get this right that'll be terrific and we have two companies left so let's move jump one over from the list that I previously said I went in order but there's one company I'm jumping from the way I said it and we're gonna go to Konami which has a PC switch multiplat also the multiplats could include PC as well so you know even more uh, wrenches being thrown but this is PC switch we've been hearing about like the possible uh, Silent Hills being revived by Sony and I believe the original rumor was Silent Hills, uh, Castlevania, Metal Gear. I doubt the Metal Gear one because of Kojima, because I think Sony wanted to give it to Kojima from what I remember hearing. And people were like, that doesn't make any sense because Kojima wanted to leave Metal Gear. That's why he left Konami originally. He wanted to work on other stuff, but Konami didn't want him, especially because of the big budgets that it was bringing in. And I find it very difficult to believe that Sony would approve of a Kon of a Ko of something like this. Um, even if it is Kojima, given the fact that Death Stranding, we don't know how much money it made, uh, but it most likely was a big, huge budget released that end up not doing what we all expected. And yeah, I got a bunch of nominations for the Game Awards, but you know, it wasn't a game that sh would have gotten. Uh, if it wasn't Kojima, I don't think people would have cared. If it wasn't that big budget, people would have cared. And, you know, it won Best OST, despite the fact that, like, a lot of the songs were not original, but whatever, still. Uh, but anyway, going with Konami, and uh, believing the rumor, I don't see it, I believe the rumor, more current, con concurrent rumor is Silent Hills being brought back, or being um, the one that Sony is doing. I'm not sure about the others, uh, but if let's assume it's just Silent Hills, that's the only part of the rumor that's true. I could see Castlevania being being made and coming to Switch and PC. Uh, a little weird that would be Switch and PC. It could also be Bomberman. Super Bomberman R was a success on the Switch. It sold like a million, so they could be be making another one. Um, so this would also be, assuming this would be announced at E3, would be for a, 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 a worldwide, um, more appealing to the worldwide. It won't be like specific regions. Um, so yeah, I would say uh, um, uh, uh, a lot of us, uh, Bomberman, maybe Castlevania, maybe, heck, maybe it's, it's a Castlevania port of Symphony of the Night. I think that's why we're already on PC, isn't it? Forget about that one then. <laughs> it's, it's Castlevania 64. I cracked the code. It's Castlevania 64. Uh, the game, the movie. Was there a movie? No, it wasn't. I'm going to go with that. So. The final one. This is the one that I had that I was saying this is a big deal. It's Capcom. This is a big deal for the simple reason for one simple reason. Capcom normally doesn't release their uh, games on at retail in Europe by themselves. Normally it's Nintendo that handles these things when it comes to Nintendo games. Nintendo didn't do that for Mega Man 11, that's why Mega Man 11 didn't get a release, a physical release in Europe. Capcom was like, we're not doing it. If you're not helping, we're not doing it. And they didn't. And here we are. So, they're allegedly doing a Capcom exclusive game coming to the Switch. Okay, sorry about that. Rudely interrupted there. Where was I? Oh yeah, I was talking about Capcom making an exclusive game for the Nintendo Switch, allegedly, coming to Europe, being physically, apparently physically, distributed in Europe by Capcom. I can only think of one game logistically, actually, and that would be Monster Hunter. And yeah, I know Monster Hunter Switch has been a conversation that's been going on for eons. But here's the thing, Monster Hunter on Switch makes perfect swank. Swench? I was gonna say Switch. Makes perfect sense. Okay, got through that somehow, some way. Jesus effing titty Christ. And I forget where I was going. Oh yeah, Monster Hunter Switch. 
is been a debate or a conversation in 2017. Now, obviously, a lot of PlayStation fanboys who don't want the game to come to Switch or back to Nintendo or back to the handheld ghetto will say, why would they divert uh, be, uh, uh, what was it? Uh, resources to the Switch version of the game when most in the world could do another 12 million or 15 million or 20 million. Well, this will only do 5 million or uh, whatever. It's exactly the same way like Nintendo fans were like when the originally rumored was World for PS4. Like, why are they gonna do it? They could have just easily done another for 3 years. So, 4 million in Japan, uh, another 1 million in the West, and then uh, not have to do it for the, the PS4, which would sell like, like, what, 3 million, 4 million? <laughs> both sides are stupid. But here's the thing why not both? Just because a game is not gonna sell as well as Monster Hunter World 2 doesn't mean the game is not gonna sell well. I'm, I, I could see Monster Hunter World, Monster Hunter Switch, be it 5, Portable 5, Portable World next generations portable z i can see it doing 10 million in japan it's gonna be f massive you know it's gonna be huge look at dragon quest 11s the game came out what was it two years after the ps4 and the 3ds version each of those sold over a million com each each sold over a million and yet the Switch version has been all already, it's like, what, at 500,000 units? 600,000 probably with uh, digital? Terrific sales. And it doesn't make sense to say those things like, oh, why make Monster Hunter, even if it just sells 5 million, it ends up just selling 5 million units. First and that probably is more than it did on Xbox One. That would be very probably uh, comparable to what it did on PS4 and PC individually. Because Monster Hunter World is like, what, what, 15, 16 million worldwide on three different platforms. If it did even 1 million on, on, the, on, the, on, the, on, the P, on the Xbox, that leaves 15 million between PC and PS4. Even if PS4 did 90% of that, which, just, just gonna calculate, 15% of, of 15 million, I think it's like, what, 12 million? I don't want to. I don't want to say something and then be absolutely incorrect. Thirteen will be thirteen and a half. Thirteen and a half. So the switch shelling uh, five million. That would be like what? It would be almost fifty percent. It would be forty percent of what that did. Okay. Forty percent of of that would be five point four million, which is a fantastic number for any game to sell. <laughs> Um, but I think that the game would do far more than that. Because here's the thing, Monster Hunter uh, Ultimate, or Generations Ultimate, came out for the Switch. That was a port of a three, it, it was an HD port of a re-release of a 3DS game, of a two-year-old 3DS game. That sold over a million, or a million in the West. It sold 1.2 or 1.3 million units worldwide. Or one, I think it was 1.2 from the West. I could be wrong on that. But I know it was over a million in the West. That was a game that Nintendo didn't give a fuck. That was a game Capcom didn't give a fuck. None of them, neither of them advertised the game in the West. And it did over a million. That's obviously in the post uh, Monster Hunter World. Uh, world. You get it. You get it. So. If it can sustain the Japanese um, trajectory for most Nintendo Switch games that has been, it's cute what you guys did before, but we're gonna absolutely shit on it, you know? Fucking Animal Crossing is about to become the 12th game ever to surpass ten, uh, 5 million units sold at retail in Japan. Only, funnily enough, Pokemon Red and Blue, or Pokemon Red, Blue and Green. Animal, I don't think Animal Crossing has ever done it. Uh, Pokemon Gold and Silver. Uh, New Super Mario Brothers. New, uh, New Super Mario Brothers. Mario Brothers, Super Mario Brothers. And I think like Monster Hunter 4 or Monster Hunter 3 Portable. There were some other games that I'm forgetting now, but like the list was mainly Nintendo and one Capcom game, which was Monster Hunter. In this world and, and how the Switch has been selling hardware, a proper competent 
marketed Monster Hunter in Japan, 4 million. Almost guaranteed. The Switch is a third, is like, was it 16 million in Japan? Let me get the, the proper, proper, proper numbers uh, for Switch in Japan. Japan numbers for the Switch, if my PC would load faster. Uh, live to date, 13,647,114 13, units. Or 647,114 units. Um, that's obviously a lot more than the PS4. But that's just screw like that and uh, Horizons, new super, um, um, not new super, uh, but, but, but Animal Crossing has already blown past like 4 million. It's probably already at 5 with digital cleared completely. But no, wait, Japan was like allegedly, I think, like, um, what was it? It was, um, no, it was um, 20% physical or 20% digital. So, in that scenario, uh, the game has sold 4.5, fucking hell, 4.5 million units. Actually, 4,582,670. That would be uh, with digital of 20% of 5 million. 449,000 we almost add another million no we yeah we almost had another million on top of of, of uh, what uh, New Horizons already done which already puts it in the echelons of the echelons of the best selling games in Japan ever you know and and that's still within like a quarter of launching it's not even been three months and that's the insane part of all of this um, which leads us to that, uh, that we possibly, possibly could be seeing, uh, not possibly, we are seeing a f amazing numbers from Animal Crossing. So, possibly we could see Monster Hunter do 4 million in Japan, which would be uh, from PS4, I believe, like um, a little bit, not completely over a uh, double, but close to it. PS4 sold, I uh, know it sold 3 million in Japan, I believe, so it would be 1 million more probably a little bit higher probably could reach 5 million maybe speculating obviously can't say and only that we could easily could do another like they did in the west with Monster Hunter 4 ultimate where they launched a uh, th new 3ds with it and it was a customizable one they could just redo the one they did for uh, generations uh, on the, the double cross which was the name of it in Japan uh, but just bring it over to the west and that would sell a crap ton of switches. That would sell a crap ton of, of Monster Hunter. Monster Hunter j again, just on PS, just on, on in Japan, would do like four million clean. You add in the, a new Western world open to not only a lot of games on Switch because the like, Switch games have exploded in popularity worldwide. And ten games exploded uh, popularity worldwide. Uh, animal, oh, no, 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 no. which were they already were popular games worldwide. They just exploded even more. You add in Capcom or Monster Hunter that's already exploded worldwide into a system that's doing very well, that people are enjoying, and that's a big deal. It's money, it's easy money. I'll still say that if it doesn't happen, it will be the biggest missed opportunity on the Switch will be a Monster Hunter game. So I think this Capcom game, especially being Switch exclusive, coming to Europe physically by Capcom tells me it's Monster Hunter. Even if it doesn't stay exclusive, it will, I think it's a Monster Hunter game. And the only other likely possibilities would be a Resident Evil game, but they've already ported every single one under the sun, except unless they're making Revelations 3 exclusive to the Switch, or they're just like, here's this Re Resident Evil 7 for the Switch, uh, ported. We know in Japan it's been cloud for a while, but it's just completely ported to the Switch, which I doubt. Mega Man X9, I doubt because Eleven did not get a, a physical re -re a physical release, so why would this one get? No, it's weird Maybe because good sales. I don't know, uh, but I'm expecting uh, it to be Monster Hunter uh, Switch Portable Five. Maybe call it Five. I'd say like, oh, it's different than World. It's different series. It's just maintaining the main series and World is World, and World Two gets announced for the PS Five way down the road. Uh, not at the PS6 uh, event on the 4th, I think it's the 4th, and we just have 
Monster Hunter World coming or Monster Hunter uh, 5 coming announced soon and probably coming out late 20 or uh, late in the financial year probably like uh, March 20, 2021 uh, at the end because Capcom is not projecting too high of sales in Japan which would be weird if Monster Hunter was coming to Switch but anyway, that, those have been my predictions to the 17, I guess, games that were leaked. Kind of the SQs were uh, out there by um, Amazon Friends. Normally, I would do an A3 predictions video, and I would have done that in March. But, you know, COVID is a bitch. E3 is no more. We don't even know when we're going to get the Rex back. So I thought, why not? It's fun to speculate. But anyway, thank you guys for watching. Remember to like, comment, subscribe, share. Uh, go and please and watch my uh, Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition uh, the Future Connected uh, playthrough. It's going to begin. It hasn't been uploaded yet. My time is going to be uploaded after I'm finished with this. And also, if you want, go and watch my Zelda Breath of the Wild Master Mode playthrough which is also having a little bit of issues because of one of the episodes where I'm doing uh, more recently I've been doing uh, because I did the the divine beast that flies from Rivaldi I forget the name of it right now and there's been technical issues with it fortunately I didn't fight the boss or I had been fighting the boss uh, when I realized it so maybe I could salvage something I don't know I'll have to wait and see but anyway thanks for watching see you guys next time